Hi everybody, Rich again here from Electric Classic Cars. Now a few weeks ago, we did an awesome road trip to St. Moritz in Switzerland and then back to our base here in Mid Wales in these fantastic Ferrari Tesla Rosses because they're electric powered obviously. But the question is, would it have been cheaper to do that with a petrol Testarossa than the electric Testarossa? And also, what would be the emissions? Now that's what this episode's all about, so let's get into it. As a recap, for those that haven't watched that episode, and for those that haven't, why not click on the link above? What we did was a road trip from our base here in Mid Wales to St. Moritz in Switzerland in two Tesla-powered Ferrari Testarossas. And on that road trip, Tim was meticulously monitoring how much energy it took to charge them up on the way down, where we were charging them up, how much it cost, and at the same places we were doing that, he was also checking out how much the petrol price was at those locations as well. So that by the time we did the whole road trip and got back here, we had really accurate information on how much it cost to do the journey in electric, and we could calculate how much it cost to do it if these were petrol. And that is why I've got a whiteboard over there and I'm ready to give you a load of numbers. Now, to set the scene on this trip, we went from Mid Wales, through the Euro Tunnel, through France, to St. Moritz in Switzerland. And we measured, or monitored if you like, all the miles we did on that trip and all the miles we did back. And that's what the stats are that we're going to go through today. What we're not covering here today, because we didn't monitor either, is all the road trips and stuff that we did in St. Moritz when we were there. So this is literally just the journey from here down to St. Moritz and back again. A total distance of just around 1,900 miles, I think it was. Now, on the first day, we set off from here with a full tank of electrons, all the way to Rugby Services to meet up with Euros in the second Ferrari Testarossa and his son. Had a bit of lunch there. I think it was lunch or breakfast. Was it lunch? Breakfast, we got breakfast up early, was, didn't we? Yeah, it was an early start, wasn't it? So breakfast at Rugby Services, and while we were having breakfast, the charge, the cars charged up and in fact they finished charging before we'd finished charging up on food and then we went from rugby services down to euro tunnel charged up there while we're waiting for the train because there's a tesla um, bank of tesla superchargers that are open to all cars down there and then that got us all the way to our night stop down at the chateau which was by saint quentin saint quentin in france to so two stops on the first day all of which were just stops we were going to have to do anyway and the second day was the longer day. That was from St. Quentin all the way to St. Moritz, stopping at places like uh, Metz, Strasbourg, Zurich. Zurich. And, you know, that got us all the way to St. Moritz in France. So a total of 1,900 miles, I think it was. And what we're going to do today on the whiteboard is cover how much it would, or how much it did cost in electricity and what the CO2 emissions were. More on that later and then we've done a comparative for what it would have been if these test rosters were petrol now for that i've been really complimentary let's say on the miles per gallon figure for the test rosters because speaking to customers and also owners of these um they told me you'd struggle to get into the teens at highway speeds and bear in mind motorway speeds or yeah, you know, what are they called? Auto, bar, auto, auto routes. routes in France. Um, 70 or 80 miles an hour cruising is what we were doing. And at those speeds, you'll struggle to get into the teens as far as miles per gallon is concerned, apparently. However, as I say, I've been really generous to uh, the petrol testarossas, and I'm going to use a figure of 17 miles per gallon, UK gallons, that is. So 17 miles per gallon is what I'm going to use for the petrol side of things, because... That, according to the books, is what you should be able to get at highway speeds. So, I've been very generous there to petrol. Um, so that's what we're going to use uh, for the costs and the CO2s. I'm going to come to that later. So, let's get into the numbers. Alrighty, it's numbers time. Now, uh, apart from my whiteboard, I've got two more props to use. One is my geography teacher glasses, because I am that old now, I need glasses. And the second is all my notes on my phone. Right, so we're going to start off with electricity costs. Now, 
there's lots of details here and I know you love your details. So pen and paper at the ready if you're going to be following this. Now we charged up this car at home. So I'm just, oh, by the way, the, all these notes we're making here are just off the car that me and Tim were in. And we charged up overnight at home. Now at home, I have Octopus Go, which is a, a tariff specifically for EV owners um, that is nine pence per kilowatt hour uh, at night. And we are pretty religious at our house that we only charge up the cars at night time. So the car got charged up to full on nighttime tariff at nine pence per kilowatt hour. And our first stop, if you remember, I said, was at Rugby Services. Now that was expensive. That was 79 pence per kilowatt hour. One of the most expensive places probably you can charge up. But that's where we arranged to meet Euros, so that's what it was. So we had a, a full charge there, and then we got down to Euro Tunnel and charged up off the Tesla supercharger network, and it was 45 pence per kilowatt hour. Now, that's an important note there. There is expensive, 79 pence per kilowatt hour, and reasonable, 45 pence per kilowatt hour. So there's a quite a huge difference out there in the rapid charger cost, if you like, for electric charging. And you don't see that in petrol. Petrol is, okay, a little bit more expensive here, cheaper there, etc. But you don't get such huge swings in cost for um, petrol as you do with charging up. So, yeah, 79 pence uh, per kilowatt hour at Rugby Services, 45 pence uh, at the Tesla Eurotunnel. And the good thing as well, or the interesting thing about the Tesla app is, it's more expensive to use at peak times and cheaper to use off-peak which is also quite interesting. So we'll put up a little photo of the uh, Tesla app there. And then in France, when we got to the Chateau, we charged up for free because they had some slow charges at the Chateau and we just hooked them up, went to bed, woke up, free, free um, tank of electrons, if you like. And again, you don't get that uh, with petrol, do you? You don't fall asleep and magically the petrol pixies fill up your tank of fuel overnight. So we started off again in the morning on the second day with a full tank of fuel. And then we went, as I say, to, to Metz, Strasbourg, Zurich, etc. And along the way, charged up. Now, we, again, used quite a few of the Tesla superchargers. The cheapest one there was 36 pence, because I've converted it to pounds and pence. The most expensive was 50, uh, which was in Zurich. Switzerland's expensive. So with all this summed up if I get my figures out so the total cost for electricity was uh, 273 pounds just double check that's correct yep so it's 273 pounds to do 1878 miles now, for petrol, as I mentioned, we were using 17 miles per gallon, which is very generous for a Ferrari Testarossa at highway speeds especially. But what uh, we did is, or what Tim did, was he noted every time we stopped what the uh, price was at the petrol station on the motorway service stations where we were stopping, uh, and also our local one where we set off, obviously, what's our closest or cheapest closest petrol station. So he made a note every single time we stopped and I'm not going to go through it all. I think the summary was, it, I think you found it was, fuel was a bit more expensive in Switzerland yeah. than France. Yeah. But uh, France was cheaper than the UK, but not by huge amounts. No, it was, right? it was everything from about £1.50 a litre up to £2 a litre. Right, OK. So, and I've got the details here if I go down to the cost down the bottom. So, the cost it would have been in fuel uh, was... Do, 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 do. 718 pounds so yeah 718 pounds if we did it in petrol at 17 miles per gallon average and 273 pounds it cost us in electric so definitely a big win for the electric there and you thought it would be higher didn't you well, I thought like you said you're being quite uh, generous with the miles per gallon. I am being if very drop, generous. If we drop that down to what I think it's probably more realistically, that goes closer to £1,000. That's correct, yeah. Um, uh, general consensus seems to be of owners, it would, you'd get around about 10 miles per gallon. Yeah. But 
yeah, you're right, it'll probably be well over a thousand uh, pounds. But I, my honest opinion, I thought it would be closer. Yeah. Because I know in the UK, uh, and the rugby service is 79 pence per kilo hour as a typical example, motorway services can be expensive, but Tesla supercharged are a lot cheaper. So I thought it'd be yeah, around about there, maybe a little bit closer. So yeah, what do you think guys, comments below? Do you think it would be closer? Do you think it'd be more expensive uh, for petrol? I don't know, interested to hear your comments. So that's the cost side of things, 273 pounds versus 17, uh, 17? 718 pounds for petrol. So let's do CO2 emissions next. Now, emissions. This is where it gets interesting. It was quite an eye-opener for me when I crunched these numbers because I think there's still people that uh, think they're in the 1980s out there that think that electricity generation is mostly coal-driven. Well, it's not, certainly not in the UK. Less than 1% now of electri electricity generation comes from coal. And I thought the UK was pretty green as far as electricity generation until I started looking up the numbers for France and then Switzerland, which is just amazing. So, and the other thing is, it was quite interesting. I'll put my geography teacher glasses back on. Um, there are websites, and we'll put up the links in the description, where you can actually go to see what the electricity generation emissions or the carb, uh, kilo, what was it, the carb, kilograms of carbon per kilo hour, what that is, per day. So you can actually go to the day that you traveled and get the exact numbers, which is what I did. So when we traveled in the UK, now I should also state that a lot of our generation at home comes from solar, but I didn't count that. Um, I just used the average, uh, or in my area, the kilowatt hour, uh, kilograms of carbon per kilowatt hour for that day. So I discounted the solar just to give petrol a chance again. Um, so on that day, where's my pen? So on, oh, I'm not gonna write this down. So on that day, it were in the UK, um, the emissions for electricity were 64 grams of CO2 per kilowatt hour. And in France, it was 13.65. So 64 for the UK, 13.65 for France, because France is primarily what, um, nuclear, a lot, uh, wind, of wind, a lot of wind, lot of wind there as well. Now, I was amazed by that. I thought, wow, France, good job. And then I saw Switzerland, which is literally 100% zero or low carbon fuel now. It's, it's um, low carbon generation. A lot of hydro there, for instance, and nuclear. So Switzerland, for the day we traveled through, it was eight grams of CO2 per kilowatt hour. That's nuts, isn't it? That's fantastic. So UK, 64. France, 13.65. Switzerland, eight. <laughs> so we've got a total kilowatt hours uh, figure here. And uh, what we did then is put in, crunch the numbers then for the emissions. And what we came up with was total of 23.57. So 23.6 kilograms of carbon for the whole trip. That is to Sam Ritz in Switzerland, and back again, 23.6 kilograms of carbon. That's not much. Now, let's talk about the CO2 emissions of petrol. And this is where I also had a bit of like, oh, I didn't know that moment. And it's when I looked at how much emissions you get per kilogram of petrol, if you like. So if you took a liter of petrol, which weighs uh, I think about 0.73 of a kilo. Tim, how much weight of carbon dioxide do you think you get from 0.73 kilos of petrol when you put it through a combustion engine? I'd have thought much less than 0.73 of a kilo. So you think you'd get less? Much less, yeah. You get more. You get 2.3 kilos of carbon dioxide for every litre of petrol that you burn. That's quite shocking. Doesn't make sense in your head. Doesn't does make it? sense, no. So you don't know why? Because I had to look this up. It's because when the, so fuel is mainly carbon, right? It's a hydrocarbon based fuel and carbon is a very light atom. And when it reacts with oxygen, which is a heavier atom, it creates a heavier thing. 
and then there's two of the oxygen atoms as well, so now it's even heavier. So that's why when you, you know, burn the carbon and it attaches itself to two oxygen um, molecules, it's much heavier. We're in it. We're Bizarre. learning today, people. So, uh, and that's not all. So that's 2.3 kilograms of um, carbon per litre, but your, oh, that, that uh, calculation is only uh, including the combustion. Now, bear in mind, you've also got to include the generation of that petrol, because I included the generation of the electricity here, so to be fair, um, we need to include the generation and the use of that petrol in the calculation here, and that's what we did. So, oh, lots of numbers. So let's have a look. So the um, fuel wise, um, okay, so there's the amount of fuel we covered. Um, so as far as fuel is concerned, emissions wise, and this is uh, quite a shocking number, we would have used on that 1,900 and, uh, mile trip, one th oh, not used, but emitted 1,577 kilograms of carbon dioxide. Wow, that's a big difference, isn't it? That's a huge difference. That's a shocker. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I'm not going to try and do the multiples there, but 23.6 kilograms of carbon on that journey using electric powered Ferraris, and if we used petrol powered Ferraris, it would have been 1,577 kilograms. And that's per car though, isn't it? Yeah, that's true, per yeah. car, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there was two of them, yeah. so you could kind of double these figures yeah. as well. But that's quite surprising. I don't know about you guys, but that's quite a shocking number. Comments below, did you expect it to be that high compared to electric? And okay, the electric um, in different countries would be different, and at different you know, times of the, uh, of the year maybe as well. But for our journey, UK, France, Switzerland, that's what it was. And that, that figure probably wouldn't change wherever you were on the planet, would it, Tim? I mean, you, no, you, you really. burn petrol no. in Malaysia and the UK, it would be pretty no. much the same emissions. So there we go. That's quite shocking, I think. Um, you know, it's a lot cheaper to do that journey uh, with an electric Ferrari Testarossa compared to petrol. And as far as emissions is concerned, it's a huge difference. No. There we go. There are the numbers, interesting numbers that they are, or are they? I don't know. But one thing that's worth noting here is we did this journey in some classic cars that were converted to electric, obviously, and they're not the most aerodynamic things on the planet, let's face it. And if we did that journey in a modern EV, like my wife's Tesla Model 3, for instance, the cost of the fuel, the electricity, if you like, would have been less. So £273 to do it in a Testarossa, it would have been quite a bit less in a modern EV, which is much more aerodynamic and much more fuel efficient, and also has a longer range. So we probably would have stopped, um, you know, less and charged up faster as well, because we can't charge up as fast as OEM cars. That's worth noting as well. So bear in mind, these figures are for a fairly inefficient electric vehicle because it's a classic car. Do that for a modern EV and the electric numbers here would be even better. So. Sadly, we've come to the end of our Testarossa to Tesla Rossa conversion journey on YouTube. And if you've not watched the whole journey, go back to the uh, start and watch it. You'll love it. Right the way back from taking the engine out, weighing the car, through to figuring out how we're going to put the batteries in. The whole journey is there. So click on the link above. We'll put um, some of the episodes up there. And if you're interested in some of the detailed numbers and the sources where I got some of the information from to crunch these numbers. I'll put as much as I can in the description, in the uh, YouTube episode description. And I'm sure there'll be loads of comments and questions down there in the comment section. So I'm really looking forward to reading your comments on this episode as well. But there we go. Unfortunately, sadly, it's the end of the Tesla Rossa build series. I hope you really enjoyed it, everybody out there. And Follow us on other journeys like the Fun Cup race car that I've got over to my left or other build series that we do. So on that note, I hope you enjoyed this episode and we'll see you on the next one.